welcome to today's show. Before we begin, we want to sincerely thank you for your overwhelming support in the East Africa Property Awards, where we bagged awards in two categories, Best Property TV Show and Property Personality of the Year. We are truly, truly grateful. All right, let's get into the show. Stay tuned because our interview is about how you can successfully handle land and property transactions. But first, we begin with our property of the week, a five-bedroom house in Kerarapon, near Karen and the county borderline between Nairobi and Kajiado counties. Let's take a look. The imposing pillars at the front of the house give it a luxurious look and the chandelier and recessed lighting built into their ceiling will create a stunning lighting effect at night. The pillars enclose a fish fountain pond, which is a unique outdoor ornament that is not found in many homes and which appeals not only to the eye but to the ear as well. Step out of your car onto a sheltered front porch that will shield you from rain. Walk through the front door made of wood reinforced in a metallic frame into the sitting room that is awash in abundant natural light. At night, you'll have plenty of lighting fixtures to illuminate the space and these are included in the cost of the house. Framing the fireplace is a material that isn't common to find inland. This is coral stone from the coast and it adds a beautiful texture while complementing the Mazera stone within which an elephant outline has been drawn. The dining room exhibits another outstanding feature to be found in the entire house, an intricately carved gypsum ceiling in cream and white with recessed or park lights. The kitchen's U-plan design allows for the efficient work triangle between the countertops, cooker and fridge. A ventilation hood is provided to extract fumes from cooking. A lockable door leads into the pantry where extra sockets enable you to place a deep freezer. The back porch is laid out in tiles that have a good grip so you don't slip as you do the laundry. Washing machine piping is in place and clothesline frames have already been set up. All the water closets are fitted with similarly colored tiles and durable faucets. Adjacent to the guest cloakroom is this room that has a separate entrance from the Cabro parking and which would therefore make an excellent gym or reception for events. Beside it is the guest bedroom that is self-contained. The wide staircase is topped by a five-arm chandelier with matching wall brackets. On the first floor, a spacious family room awaits, fully outfitted with pay TV cabling and cabinets to hold all your entertainment gadgets. Adjacent to it is a massive balcony looking out over the front of the house. This is a great spot to relax and enjoy the fresh countryside air as you look out over the fountain, gazebo and gardens. The first bedroom would be suitable for twin beds because each bed would have its own wall bracket and socket. The glass shower cubicle contains a wall corner holder for bathing accessories. A solar panel heats sufficient water for the entire house. The bedroom fittings are similar. In the corridor are shoe racks and more drawers. This particular room can serve multiple purposes. Numerous shelves would make it a good library. Alternatively, bring in custom-made wardrobes and transform it into a bedroom. Its cupboards open to reveal yet another hidden chamber. A winding staircase leads up to the second floor where there is another well-lit room that would make a great hideaway to study, work or pray in. 
Back on the first floor, we find shoe racks and cupboards outside the master bedroom's door. Inside, it is very welcoming with an alcove to place a window seat. And once again, one of the wardrobes opens to reveal a dressing up area with a massive mirror. Those occupying the master bedroom will have the privilege of enjoying a steam sauna cubicle that consists of a jacuzzi, steam jets emitting water sideways to give you a full body massage, both handheld and overhead showers, as well as a radio so that you listen to all your favorite FM stations as you unwind. Outdoor lighting is in plenty, both in the garden as well as on the house. A kitchen garden is available near the gazebo. All documents are in order to facilitate a quick sale. The cost is 65 million shillings, negotiable. This house is located on Kerarapon Drive, in a quiet environment with a cool climate. Up next, Sadolin Paints and the Nairobi County Government launch an initiative that will truly make Nairobi stand out as the capital of Kenya. Nairobi City County is set to join the League of World Class Cities through various initiatives. This has seen the county government and Sadolin Paints engage in yet another partnership aimed at improving the beautification of the city. Today is a great day. It's a landmark event where Sadlin Paints and the County of Nairobi have partnered together to come and try and see how we can beautify the city. Nairobi as a city is one of the most beautiful cities we have in Africa. And today we're, be we're being given the opportunity to add a little bit of color, add a little bit of happiness and try and color the world of the Nairobi residents. The event was graced by Dr. Ivan Skidero who spoke on the milestones and importance of the beautification program. About a year ago, we met with Sutherland Paints and uh, we recognized that painting is an art and it requires a skill. We would give the young men and women opportunities to be trained. And uh, it started a year ago and this is the second lot of graduates. The first one was 35, today is about um, 65. And we'll be uh, rolling out on the average between 50 to 60 uh, every month and there is opportunity for them to add value in painting a lot of the buildings in, uh, in our city uh, because our bylaws require that all buildings be painted externally every uh, three to four years. But also as a government we have our own houses where, uh, which we rent out to uh, the city residents and where some of our staff lives. We have our schools, we have our hostels and we are going to use these skills to, to uh, paint uh, all our facilities. This beautification is set to give Nairobi a much needed facelift. Uh, we're looking at painting the roads, the road marking lines in between the roads, the paving blocks, the curbs, as well as flower pots, and anything that will actually add value, add color, add happiness, and uplift the general feeling within the city of Nairobi. The county government has set up a Governor's Youth Oversight Board office that has been selecting youth to take part in various opportunities. To apply, simply walk into City Hall, ask for the board office and you'll be signed on at no fee. This is an initiative uh, that has been uh, done and, 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 and um, cooperated within the office of the Governor to empower women and youth through socio-economic and we are now trying to embrace the issue of now empowering youth from the world levels, youth and women from the world levels, to make them live a decent life. Sadolin Paints have offered to be part of this brilliant project by training over 100 women and youth through their painters training program. They will immediately be involved in city county projects. 22 year old Nyambura is a proud satisfied graduate of the program. I went there and I got some training for three months. It's easy. If you're willing, you can do it. Everyone can do it. Apparently, it will change my life completely since I have the skills. Uh, I'll earn in, in every household, in every building, you need paint. So you'll be needing my services. What advice does she have for her fellow youth? Ukipata skill tu kidogo tu, na kusaidia tu sana kwa life yako, 
to make money. We really want now to reduce that backlog of unemployment. By doing so, we have started this initiative to make sure that our young people get employed and live decent life through such initiative that uh, Sadolene and the Nairobi City County government is doing. Painting skills were put to the test during the launch of the road markings along City Hallway. Of course, for a project of this magnitude, you must use the finest quality paints to ensure the longevity of the paintwork. For the road marking, we've got a specialized product, a cold apply road marking paint. We also have a hot thermoplastic paint that will apply for the roads. But when it comes to the buildings, we've got a product called WeatherGuard Extreme, where we offer a seven year guarantee. The only product in the market that's been here for decades and has performed seamlessly for many, many years. Such initiatives should be replicated across the board. Other corporates could certainly learn from this initiative. We'd like to um, uh, um, encourage other corporates to emulate what Sutherland Paints is doing, join the county government so that we can provide opportunities for young men and women. The youth graduating have also been trained on solid waste management and environmental matters, making them useful in maintaining sites like the Uhuru Highway Bunyala Road roundabout that Sutherland Paints have adopted. Color adds happiness to people's lives, and Sutherland Paints aspire to create a happier, safer, and more beautiful Kenya. This is not the first project we're doing. Our initial project was empowering of the women of Nairobi to become professional painters. This was done a couple of months ago. Our current initiative is training the youth of Nairobi to become professional painters. We believe, as Sutherland Paints, the women and the youth are the future of Kenya and of Nairobi. By empowering our women and our, and our youth, we're going to create employment. We're going to create professionals in the industry who are going to go out there and offer a better product quality. The buildings we see will be better. The cars we see will be brighter. All put together, we expect Sandlin Paints to be working very closely with the county in achieving the Vision 2030. If you live in Nairobi, it is your responsibility to make it as habitable as possible. The youth and women especially can make a huge positive change because they are energetic and creative. Uh, they should be hopeful. They should look to the future with anticipation. And they should love Nairobi because Nairobi is the home of opportunities. It's time to take a short break, but don't go away. We are coming back with a lot more. Welcome back. Some of you may have unfortunately fallen victim to dishonest buyers and sellers of property. These transactions are not to be taken lightly. So to take us through the correct procedures is Mr. Morris Omolo, a registered and practicing valuer and estate agent with the Institution of Surveyors of Kenya. Welcome. Thank you very much, Janet. Let's get right into it. What is the first step to be taken in acquiring land and property in Kenya? Basically, when you're talking about land, um, there are two aspects that you have to look at. Uh, we are talking about the physical asset itself, what you see on the ground, and then of course the most important bit, the papers. So basically, um, if you want to purchase land, your first point of call is basically the documentation. Because if the documentation is right, you cannot get the physical asset. And uh, the first step would basically be getting the title from the owner. Uh, and these at times uh, might necessitate that you sign a non-disclosure agreement because you know somebody's title is a confidential document. Once you have that document, you look at it. Uh, first of all, do your own assessment. Uh, is the name on it uh, the correct name? Of course, the owner of the land will also give you his copy of title, if he's the owner actually. And then after that, you take the title to uh, the land's office where you conduct a search. And this basically is uh, the beginning of your due diligence. And from there, you're going to be issued with uh, an official search certificate. 
Now this certificate basically gives you um, details such as the registered owner of the land, okay. it gives you um, the size of the land, it gives you uh, whether there are any registered encumbrances and charges, basically if somebody has taken a loan on that piece of land. Right. It also gives you when the title was issued. And this has become very important. Dates basically tell you a different story that can help you to prevent you know, uh, being duped in the process of buying land. Because once in a while you'll see that the date of registration of the title yes. is at times either uh, uh, before or after even the owner of the land was born. So after you look at that uh, uh, and you confirm that everything is okay, the next thing is to go to uh, the Survey of Kenya. Now the Survey of Kenya, you're going to be issued with a survey map. Now the survey map is basically uh, a document that shows you the boundaries of the land. Okay, because uh, the copy of title and the uh, such certificate are going to show you the size of it. Yes. But now the map shows you the boundary and shows you your neighbors and shows you other features that are around there. If there's a river cutting across it, um, if there's a landmark, a school, normally it's indicated on the map. Once you have that, then you go and look, have a look at the land again. And now you try and compare the physical asset with the documents that you have. And uh, nowadays, the good thing is that we have Google Earth, you know. So you can actually try and map the survey map onto Google Earth. And if they're similar, yeah. then of course you know that uh, you're on the right track. But you see, now that is just the beginning. Once all that is done, and of course you do that with the help of, the, of, of a registered uh, estate agent, uh, um, a registered conveyancing lawyer, to take you through you know, uh, that process. Other than the agent and the lawyer, which other professionals must I engage? You also require the services of a registered land surveyor. The land surveyor uh, will come in and do what you call re-establishment of beacons. Mm. He goes to site and actually re-establishes the beacons and says that this beacon is correctly placed, this other beacon is correctly placed, so the boundaries has be, have, as, are, are, are as accurate as what is shown uh, on the map. A value will come and assess and give you uh, a, a good estimate of the value of your property so that you get uh, value for money. And this works for both sides. So the buyer will have his own value and the seller will have his own value. Now is it time for money to exchange hands? Not yet. Once you do your due diligence and you ascertain it's correct, uh, you have talked to the uh, registered agent, he's confirmed, he's done his, uh, his homework, mm. your value has assessed the land and he's confirmed that that is the correct price for it, uh, for both sides, the buyer and the seller. Yes. Um, the next thing for you is to do a due diligence, not on the property, but on the seller. And this is something that people don't normally do. So you go further ahead and confirm that the, registered, the purported registered owner of the land can actually sell that land without having any other risks of that transaction being cancelled. The other good example I'll give you is um, sometimes companies own land. Yes. Okay? And when a company owns the land, you also have to do diligence on that company. Now, you have to go up to the members do we have does the company have a clause that allows it to sell that particular land wow you go into that detail you go into that detail when you're dealing with the property that is registered under a company yes. the next thing is is the company up to date with its annual returns so if you have a shell company that you've never done any registration and you've decided that you want to own all the properties in Nairobi with and you've never filed any uh, annual returns, you don't do your KRA returns, yes. and at the point of purchasing the land, you know you need your KRA pin. Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, that KRA pin will definitely KRA will go and confirm that you're up to date with your taxes. Mm. And also, uh, it goes to the uh, Attorney General, Registrar of, 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 of Companies, have you been filing your annual returns? Right. If that is not in order, then that company cannot sell that land. Okay. So that now, when transactions have gone and you've paid your 30% or your 50%, that's when you realize that, oh, this company that is selling uh, has not been filing returns for the last 15 years. According to the Registrar of Business, 
it no longer exists. You have to be thorough and you have to take your time with yeah. property. So at which point is the process complete? Because you've brought in details that not many people think about. What else is there? Nowadays we have the Kenya Law Report website. Yes. All right. And it's very informative. You key in the LR number, you key in the owner of the property, and it will bring you cases that have anything to relate with that owner of the property or that property itself. If all that is okay and you have a good conveyancing lawyer, he will, he will go through, uh, you know, the initial process is to do an offer letter. Mm -hmm. Okay? So before you sign that letter of offer, which comes from, uh, which comes from uh, the owner's lawyer, uh, you have to go through it with a tooth comb because you have to check all the clauses and if you have a good convincing lawyer, he'll do that for you and tell you that uh, your rights are still protected. You're not going to lose your money yeah. if you put in because at the time that you're signing that letter of offer, you put in a deposit. Now pending signing of uh, the sale agreement. So once the sale agreement is signed and the transfer process has begun, now you pay the rest. And also another thing is that if you have a good lawyer, the lawyer will tell you that you don't pay the deposit to the owner. Who do you pay it to? You pay it to the owner's lawyer. What happens is you give the funds to your lawyer. Okay. Now your lawyer will get in touch with the lawyer of the owner. Sorry, the owner's lawyer. Okay? Yes. And he will pay the money yes. or give an undertaking and say that the funds have been remitted to me and I have them in the account. Yes. So the moment ABCD is done, then we will release the funds to you. And should it be cash or should there be a paper trail? There should be a paper trail at all costs, at all times. And that should not be something that... Never, pay, never buy land with cash. Always have a paper trail. The process that you have outlined, does it cover both land transactions as well as property like buildings? Whatever you erect on land becomes part of land okay. okay so the land and the building is one and the same thing yeah whether you have a commercial office whether you have a house that all of it is called land if you look at your title your title talks a lot more about the actual land than the buildings it just tells you that you have to build ABCD okay within a specific period of time of course now is there a specific percentage of the selling price that has to be paid to the experts Yes, um, you have your valuer who assesses uh, the value of the land. Uh, on average, uh, we are talking about 1% uh, of the first 2 million and then 0.25% of the residual. It's something very small. The lawyers, of course, will also be almost around there, 1.5% 1, 1 of the property. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, if you look at all your due diligence costs, Plus also your stamp duty comes in because you also have to pay government. If you're in urban areas, that's 4%. Rural areas, that's 2%. So if you're, if you're talking about a case of, of an urban area, you're talking about uh, seven, between 75 seven and 10% of the value of the land. Mr. Omolo has a lot more to say on this topic of land and property transactions. So make sure you join us next week for part two. Now, if you're looking for a house to rent, here are the classifieds. This apartment comprises of one bedroom and two bedroom units featuring spacious rooms with excellent finishing. It's within a gated community with close proximity to social and economic facilities. The monthly rent is 13,000 shillings. This master and suit apartment is located in a secure neighborhood, easily accessed by main roads. It has a children's playground and sufficient parking space on the Cabro paved parking lot. The apartment is centrally managed and an active residence association is in place. The monthly rent is 23,000 shillings. Located in Pangani, this apartment is master and suit with elegant finishes and spacious well-lit rooms. 24-hour security is guaranteed by the presence of security guards and a perimeter wall. Ample parking space is provided for each unit. It has close proximity to social and economic facilities. The monthly rent is 30,000 shillings inclusive of service charge.
once again, thank you very much for voting for us in the East Africa Property Awards. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter because we will be giving you a lot of activities that you can do with your loved ones this festive season. Until next Sunday, goodbye.